Okay, our next reactions are single replacement and double replacement. We're going to start with single replacement. With single replacement, you're going to have an element replace a second element in the compound. So if we look at a skeleton equation of potassium plus water, we're going to get potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. And so what's going to happen, potassium is kind of a special case, but potassium is going to come in and it's going to kick off one of these hydrogens so that we're left with an OH group bonded to the potassium and then since hydrogen got kicked off by itself can't exist by itself it's diatomic we're going to get H2 down here so substance A plus BC is going to yield B plus AC so A is going to come in it's going to kick this B uh, part of the compound off so B is going to be by itself if it's diatomic we need to make sure we make it diatomic and then A and C are then going to be bonded together. And so for a single replacement, your telling sign is going to be an atom or um, an element plus a compound, yield a compound plus an atom. So you're going to look for something single by itself plus a compound, yielding a compound plus something single by itself. So in order for a single replacement reaction to happen, one metal is going to have to replace another based on its reactivity. And we're going to use the activity series of metals to do this. And so these metals are listed in order of decreasing activity. So the ones at the bottom are not very active. And so a reactive metal can replace any metal below it in the series. So they can move down, but they cannot move up. So if we look at magnesium plus zinc nitrate, on your activity series of metals that you were given, I want you to find magnesium and then find zinc. If zinc is below magnesium, then magnesium can replace the zinc. And zinc is below magnesium, so the magnesium is going to come in. It's going to replace the zinc, so it's going to kick the zinc off. So zinc is going to be by itself now. It is not one of the seven diatomic, so we can leave it like it is. And then the magnesium is going to bond to the nitrate. So you're going to have to write this formula correctly. Magnesium is a 2 plus. Nitrate is a negative 1. So you're going to get MgNO3, 2. And this reaction is balanced. Okay, so let's look at another one. Magnesium plus silver nitrate. So find magnesium, find silver. Silver is all the way at the bottom of our list. So magnesium can replace the silver. So the magnesium is going to come in. It's going to kick the silver off. So the silver is going to be by itself. Magnesium is going to bond to nitrate. So we have MgNO3 2 again. And this reaction is not balanced. So we have two NO3 groups here, but we only have one NO3 group here. So we're going to have to give it a coefficient of 2. That now makes 2 silver. So we're going to have to put a 2 in front of the silver here. And now we are balanced. And let's look at one more. Magnesium plus lithium nitrate. So if I'm magnesium, lithium is all the way at the top. Nothing is going to replace lithium. So this is going to be no reaction. Um, there will be some metals that you'll see not on our list. Um, if they do not show up on our list of activity series of metals, that's because they are so far to the bottom that they are completely unreactive um, and they're really not going to replace anything else. So most of the most reactive ones that we're going to use are on this list. Um, so if you see something not on this list, uh, the metal that we're using is probably going to be able to replace it. So this is going to bring us to double replacement. Oh, sorry, halogens. Halogens can replace another halogen, and we're going to use the halogen group as our activity series. So they're also going to decrease as you go down the group. So if you have fluorine plus hydrobromic acid, if you find fluorine, fluorine's at the top. So this fluorine is going to come in, 
Now, it has to replace another halogen, so it's going to come in and kick the bromine off. It's going to replace the other halogen that's here. So when bromine comes off, it's going to be by itself. Now, bromine is one of our seven diatomic, so you're going to have to put a subscript to. Plus, now that hydrogen is going to be bonded to the fluorine. Make sure you write your formula correctly. Hydrogen is a plus one. Fluorine is a negative one. So you're just going to get HF, hydrofluoric acid. And now we need to balance, because we put this two here, that means we're going to need two bromine here. And that makes two hydrogen, so we're going to have to put a two here. And now this two takes care of our fluorine that's here. All right, now double replacement reactions. So a double replacement reaction is the exchange of cations. Remember, cations are first in a formula, so we're going to be exchanging these two things. Um, it's usually between two ionic compounds in an aqueous solution, remember that means in water, and it will often form a precipitate. Remember, a precipitate is an insoluble solid. So you're going to have AB plus CD yield AD plus CB. So you can see the A has bonded to the D and the C has bonded to the B. So the A and the C traded places. So it's going to be a compound and a compound yielding a compound plus a compound. Now you're not going to use the activity series for this because these cations are always going to change places in our case. So here we have sodium sulfide plus cadmium nitrate. So identify your cations first, sodium and cadmium, and they're going to trade places. So the sodium is going to bond to the nitrate, cadmium is going to bond to the sulfur. You need to write your formulas correctly. Sodium is a plus one, nitrate is a negative one. So you're just going to get NaNO3 plus Cadmium used to be a 2. Remember, you can use the subscript to figure out what the charge on that guy used to be. So cadmium used to be a 2. Cadmium is a 2 plus. Sulfide used to be a 2 negative. So that's just going to be CDS. And now we need to balance because we have two nitrate groups here. We only have one here. So we're going to give it a coefficient of 2. And when we do that, that takes care of our 2 sodium that we're here. Right, another one, sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid. So the sodium and the hydrogen are going to trade places. So the sodium is going to bond with the sulfate. The hydrogen is going to bond with the cyanide. Sulfate used to be a 2 negative. So you're going to get Na2SO4. And hydrogen's a plus 1, cyanide's a negative 1. So you're going to get h in hydrocyanic acid. Uh, this is not balanced. We have two sodium here, but we only have one here. So we're going to put a two in front of this guy. And then we have two hydrogen here, but we only have one here. So we're going to put a two in front of this guy, and that takes care of the two cyanide that we just made here. So now we are balanced. And one more. Calcium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. So the calcium and the hydrogen are cations. So the calcium is going to bond to the chlorine. The hydrogen is going to bond to the hydroxide. So calcium has a 2 plus charge. That's going to give us CaCl2. Plus, when you put a hydrogen ion with a hydroxide ion, you're going to get water. This is also an example of a neutralization reaction. Each time you have an acid and a base, you're going to get a salt and water talked about that with our acids. So this is not balanced. Um, we have two chlorine here. We only have one here. We have two hydrogen here. We have two here and one here. So I think if we put a two in front of this hydrochloric acid, kind of give us an even number of hydrogens to work with. That takes care of our chlorine. And then we can put this two here. That gives us 2 times 2 is 4 hydrogen, 
2 plus 2 is 4 hydrogen. And that also takes care of our two oxygen that are here. So 2 times 1 is 2. And so now we're balanced.